We now have Tropical Storm Lee, a new system forming out in the main development region of the Atlantic. Not a surprise as it's peak of hurricane season. In today's video, I've got the latest Conan projections from models in the National Hurricane Center, as we have an increasing likelihood of a Category 4 or 5 storm to be in the Atlantic. And I've also got the information on the possibility for an East Coast landfall after a northward curve. So let's go ahead and get right into all those details. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Here we go. So as of your evening update from the National Hurricane Center, we've seen a tropical depression now transition into tropical storm Lee. It's got 1,005 millibar central pressure with 45 mile per hour winds. It is moving west northwestward at a normal speed for a tropical cyclone around 16 miles per hour force here, not really being affected by anything to um, put a damper on its strengthening. Strong winds will give the Caribbean islands a very close call. If you live in any of the following islands, you do have at least a 10% chance of seeing some of these tropical storm force winds on the southern side of the storm pass by, even though the center will not come close. Guadalupe, St. Kitts, Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla, the Virgin Islands, as well as Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, all of these areas you need to be monitoring this system very closely for some of the rain and wind to still push through nonetheless. You can see that track bringing it just north of these islands as we go into the weekend, but while Lee will be far away, the wind field will be very large due to its intensity. You can see it's expected to become a hurricane over the course of the next 24 to 36 hours as of your Tuesday. It should be a hurricane by the time you're waking up on your Thursday, and here we go into our Friday afternoon, and you might have a major hurricane bearing down on you there into portions of these islands at least to your north and if you know anybody who might be on a boat north of there that is just going to just going to be very choppy seas and very dangerous conditions there here's your gfs trends by the time we hit your six this is your wednesday we're talking about a hurricane potentially already being here and out pushing on off towards the west northwest you can see a very close call the good news is the winds tend to normally stay on the right front quadrant with which is the northeast side of a storm so as this pushes on by the Windward Islands for us here, overall most of the winds should stay on the north side, but this is looking at lower level winds, not right at the surface, but just above our heads in the atmosphere. But notice how some of these winds kind of graze places like San Juan, Puerto Rico, some of these islands in the areas like Charlestown there. We're watching these areas for you there because you could at least see some 20, 30 mile per hour winds plus as this pushes on through. Notice how this begins to take a northerly tr um, track for us here and take that curve beyond that. Here we go past the weekend and starting next week. And again, this is where kind of three possibilities come into play. Will it hit the southeast? Will it head up towards the northeast? Or will it curve out to sea like many tropical cyclones that follow this path do? But you can see just a very intense eye and eye wall expected to be there. In fact, winds of major hurricane force category 4 plus strength will be very possible in this area. I circled Bermuda on the eastern side of this so you know that Bermuda is in the line of fire with this storm as it looks right now. This is the GFS model, I'm going to say that again, because it is always kind of robust and likes to take systems towards land, it seems like. And it has taken this right on up into portions of the northeast. Let's play this back just a little bit more. This is as we head towards your September 16th, so you're talking more than 10 days away. But there could very well be a system wrapping 100 plus mile per hour winds around, not only into places like Newfoundland, but all the way up the eastern, or excuse me, the northeast coast from places like New York City, all the way and over into places like Portland, Maine, and along that coastline. We need to watch this very closely. Now I'm going to turn on mid-level winds for this model run. This is the European model, and why I want to do this is kind of show you some of the steering currents that were affecting this storm with these runs that we've been seeing through the day today. This is the earlier run, so the morning run for you here from your Tuesday, and you can see this storm. This is going to show it weaker because the winds are weaker a little, you know, further up in the atmosphere with this system, but this shows you the overall jet stream and some of the patterns we're looking at here. First of all, again, you can see the system passing just north of the islands. Let me draw those possibilities for you again. You want to look towards the southeast. You want to look towards the northeast. You want to look towards the north because all these areas, these are where you want to watch out for this system to push on up. And that's pretty much the cone of uncertainty beyond, you know, where the NHC cone goes because we have no clue where this is going to go. Overall, the models show the southeast as being in the clear, but that doesn't mean you are completely um, out of the equation. Any little change in this cold front coming off the coast right here that they're showing on the 14th on the European model, that could change things. We need to watch this in the southeast, but overall, if this were to make a landfall, the highest chances would be that it happened into portions of the far northeastern United States or into places like Newfoundland. The European model only goes to 240 hours, which means this is the furthest we're going to see it, but you can definitely see it beginning to trend on off towards the northeast there already in this earlier model run. But what I want to do is I want to show this to you now in the 
in the um, er, next model run, which is your 12Z model run, the one from lunchtime from the day today. Here we go with your European model mid-level winds. You can see that storm pretty much in the same placement as it passes by just north of the Caribbean Sea Force here in the Windward Islands. Notice how the system kind of slows down with some of that indirect influence from that system digging on down there into portions of the eastern United States. But look at how the European model takes this and kind of begins to turn it towards the north and west as opposed to the north and east. That would be something we, we need to watch because that follows more in line with the um, GFS's pattern for us, which is something that we do definitely do not want to see, because even if this were a Category 3, 4 plus offshore, this could still come onshore as a dangerous hurricane, even in the northeast. Of course, it would be stronger if it were to hit the southeast. That doesn't matter, though. This is a dangerous system that could hit the United States, which is why we need to keep it just close on that. I can't reiterate that enough. But again, the faster this little system digging on down gets here, um, that's what the earlier models would have been showing, pushing this off towards the northeast. The slower this takes, or if it just doesn't come at all, then we're talking about this system now pushing right on up into portions of the northeast, so we need to monitor this pattern very closely. Play that out for you a couple more times. Again, you can see places like Bermuda could very much be impacted by the system before it even makes that jog towards the northwest, but you can definitely see, let me play this for you, moving on off towards the northwest for us there. That's definitely something that the European model is showing in that run, which is why this is something to monitor closely. We have to keep a very close eye on these models, especially with the European model trying to trend toward the United States, but here's a look at the overall plots you can see. In general, having this push on off towards the northeast, I definitely think a place like Newfoundland could be a very um, much so a target for us here in eastern Canada. Um, but look at some of those models that kind of have an outlier towards the Bahamas. Again, even places like Florida need to monitor this closely with the track being up in the air beyond the cone. Please stay tuned for this forecast. You can see, again, high certainty for this system to make its way just north of the Caribbean. But beyond that, places like Bermuda have a pretty good chance of seeing some sort of impacts from this. And regardless of where this goes, we'll definitely see some dangerous rip currents and swells getting going along the east coast. But again, notice how Maine is kind of in that yellow area right along the northeast coast. Those are some of the areas that need to monitor the system the most closely as I see it right now. But again, this is still about a week and a half out. So let's look at those headlines. Tropical Storm Lee is beginning an intense strengthening trend, with hurricane status being likely with the storm well before it passes north of the Windward Islands. So the expanding wind field could be a minor to moderate threat as this hurricane skirts by, and of course, choppy waters. Nothing will be re re uh, really be affecting the storm during its initial run west-northwestward. Now the models continue to f fight over the track as it curves northward. A northward curve is likely to occur at the end of the weekend and into next week, and that leaves it up to the storm systems coming off the USA. Yep, we need those to help. And steer Lee away and keep it out to sea. Unfortunately, there are several possibilities and very low confidence in all of them. Everybody along the East Coast should keep an eye on this. Everybody as far south as Florida needs to be monitoring this dangerous storm for any changes because it would definitely be much stronger if it took a route towards the Bahamas instead. This will be a very large and dangerous storm no matter what. I can't stress that enough. This is going to be dangerous. Of course, I'll have you Meaning all these updates here on One Nation Weather, so go ahead and like and subscribe so you can get all the most accurate information as it comes out. Here's a look at the credits, everyone. I hope you have a great evening.